So thank you, Sati, and I'm very happy to share my own experience in training health workers on communication skills and emotional competence. And this is a quote, this is a reflection from one of our participants saying, when I'm angry, I usually feel irritated, like I can swallow someone. So I just want us to imagine how this uh, health worker uh, would relate to a patient or even her fellow colleague when feeling uh, this way. So as we all acknowledge that health workers uh, work under very stressful uh, situations, dealing with many, many challenges as Mary has uh, alluded in her presentations. And these challenges can really influence communication behaviors among health workers and the way they relate uh, with, uh, with patients. And there is a, this is a systematic review that was done recently looking at burnout among healthcare providers in Sub-Saharan Africa. And it found a prevalence, a burnout prevalence of 40 to 80%. And majority of those who are really burnt out are nurses. Nurses have the highest level of burnout. And what this review also found is a limited interventions to promote professional well being and prevention and coping with burnout. Out of 62 articles, I think only two articles looked at interventions to interventions to manage burnout. So we also acknowledge that uh, emotional labor as a skill, it's, it's, an, it's an acknowledged, it's not taught in the medical and nursing curriculum. And if you ask nurses, what have you learned about emotional management? What they will tell you is, uh, I was taught that I should empathize with my patients, uh, allay their anxiety, but how to do that in a practical way it's, it's, it's not easy. So more often these uh, skills are taught in a theoretical way, but when it comes to application in practice, it's not, uh, it's not easy. So there is need to um, bridge the gap between medical and the emotional aspects of care. So this is the training model that, uh, that we use, as, as Mary has said, the information about this training is uh, available on the Connect uh, website. So this training is called IKEA Haaland model, and it was uh, developed by Anna Haaland, who is a social scientist from the University of Oslo, and uh, we've worked with Anna for quite a long time. She has used this model uh, across uh, nine countries, across different uh, cultures. And the aim of this training is to empower health workers to communicate with awareness and emotional competence. And the IKEA stands for intelligence, communication, awareness, action, reflections, and emotions. And these are the key concepts that we teach in this, uh, in this training. So just to highlight how the training, how, how the training is, uh, is designed. So it's a, a nine to six to nine month process using reflective and experiential, experiential learning approaches. And why this long? Because we know that uh, changing habits takes time. The way we are communicating today, these are habits that we have developed over time. So to unlearn these behaviors, we also need time to unlearn them. So the process uh, is divided into four phases. Phase one is a self-observation and reflection period over three to four months, where we give the health workers reflective assignments to reflect on their own communication behaviors when they are relating with patients, colleagues, and anybody in their workspace. And uh, we give them simple tasks like, like um, how well do you listen to your patients? For one week, just look at how are you listening to your patients? What happens when you listen well? And what happens when you don't listen well? And then we also give them uh, tasks like what irritates you when you are working with patients? Look at the things that irritate you. When you, re when you are irritated, how do you react? How do you communicate with your patients? And what is the effect of your communication on patients? So there are a number of tasks that we give them. And then they give us feedback in form of most significant story of change. And then also they highlight what is it that they want to learn. And then after that process, we invite them for a skills workshop, which is five days. Uh, and, and in this workshop, they learn the things that they say that struggling with in a participatory way and uh, using experiential learning approaches. So in this workshop, they learn basic communication, how to listen well to patients, how to show empathy, how to show respect. And then they also learn about uh, stress management and burnout, dealing with conflicts, all the issues that they say they're struggling with, we handle them in this uh, five days workshop. 
And then after the workshop, now they go back to their work areas with these new skills and put them in practice. But we also guide them with further reflective assignments so that they can put the skills in a more guided way. And then they also give us feedback how these skills are working in practice. And then after that period of uh, three months, we call them back for a final workshop on month uh, six or month eight, nine there. They come back for three days to summarize the learning and they share success stories, how these skills worked in practice and what challenges they still have, and then address those challenges. So just to share more about the reflective uh, period. So when we give them these assignments, they give us feedback, and this is an example of uh, what they say. So they become aware and conscious of their actions and reflect on what is it that they want to learn. So this one is saying, I have realized that I'm a poor listener and I don't pay attention to instructions. Sometimes I interrupt when one is talking with my own opinion. I've been harsh, rude, and most people who told me that I'm always serious and thus they fear me. So they look at their, their own selves, reflect on their behavior and, and give us feedback. So this one said, I want to learn how to understand, listen well, and control my emotions. So we help them identify their learning needs. So when they come to the uh, workshop, they are really ready to, to learn uh, from their own uh, reflections. So the, the workshops are very participatory in nature using experiential learning approaches. So we have a demonstration. We develop skits from the reflections that they share. We read them and develop uh, short skits to show bad behaviors. So we play our behaviors as health workers. We, la we laugh at our behaviors and then ask, why do we behave this way? Or how do you think the patients felt? So we get to do the, uh, the, the skits, role plays, exercises, group discussions, and uh, lectures. So during the workshop, many of them come to share very painful experiences they've had with patients. So it's more of a, deb a, a debrief session for them and some share scenarios where they have handled patients very badly. And uh, we use those experiences to, to, to reflect on learning and not to judge them. So as trainers, we have a great role to facilitate learning and not to judge uh, patient uh, participants' behaviors. So we started this training in 2009 in Kenya and uh, we started with nurses initially, but the demand for the skills have uh, grown uh, over time. So we have trained several groups of nurses, clinicians, research staff, uh, county managers, and currently we are running a training program for nurse managers uh, for NBU and newborn care. So what, what changes are the health workers are reporting after the nine months a process of learning? So majority of them really acknowledge the learning about emotional management, that they can recognize their emotions, patients' emotions, step back from wanting to react in an automatic way and take responsibility to communicate well. And they're also uh, reporting improved respect for patients and colleagues, uh, fewer conflicts with patients, reduce the burnout and the stress and burnout, and also improve the uh, job satisfaction despite the many challenges that uh, they are facing. And uh, these trends have been shown across all the countries where Anna has, uh, has uh, implemented the, this training. And th these results are based on participants' own reflections. So it's reported uh, reflections. So these are just a few examples of what they are saying in terms of um, learning about managing emotions. And one of them is saying, the most important skill that I learned during the communication training is emotional awareness, because emotions play an important role in the way we communicate at work and at home. Before I attended this training, if I was overwhelmed or angry, I used to be carried away by emotions with quick reactions, but now I can control my emotions. And many of them, they are, they are reporting this improvement. And this one is saying, I've noticed that when I treat patients with respect, they are easier to handle and they are less fussy. And they seem to gain trust and confidence in me and in the, in the system. And then another thing that we are also, uh, the, the health workers are reporting is seeing patients as fellow human beings. Because sometimes when we are in these discussions uh, with the health workers, sometimes they feel like the health workers belong to another rest and the patients belong to another rest. But through uh, these self reflections and the, and, the, and the training, they're able to see that patients are fellow human beings. And this nurse here is saying that as a nurse, I'm not just focusing on the sickness. Now I'm doing it wholesomely 
I'm looking at that mother wholesomely because rather than the sickness the mother is having, she's a complete mother, just like me. And she has everything. So now I can analyze other faculties, her social status, her mental status. So more um, practicing patient-centered care approach. So there are many of these uh, quotes, but because of time, I only shared these two. So some of the challenges that we have uh, experienced is the um, lack of awareness among managers that communication skills need to be taught. And I think uh, what Mary said that involving the managers in this kind of interventions really helps in uh, building acceptance for this kind of uh, intervention. And then there is also quick, the, the, the quest for quick fix. So you tell them this training takes six to nine months. It's like, oh, this nine months of uh, full-time pregnancy, what are we learning about communication? What is it that we don't know? We've been communicating all along. So it takes time to really talk to uh, the, the participants and even the managers about why this approach. And then some of uh, the other um, challenges that we have with participants is the use of reflective learning. It's a new way of learning to them. So we, we really need to encourage, uh, encourage them. Uh, but with time, they've come to learn that the training is a, is, is a useful training for their mm -hmm. work. And then balancing the many assignments we give them with their work. Some get to do them, some they don't get to do them. By the end of the day, we call them all to come and participate in the, in the training. And then one other challenge they're also facing is sarcasm from, from colleagues when practicing these their new skills. So when they go out there with their new skills, they want to listen to patients better, want to empathize. And their colleagues who have not been to the training will tell them like, we don't have all the time to listen to these patients. You cannot be listening to it each and every um, patient like that. But they, they find time to, to practice the skills among, I mean, amid all these uh, challenges. And then another challenge we have also faced is evaluating the, the training. So currently we, are, we have used mainly is the, what the participants are reporting in terms of their own uh, improvements, but we are looking forward to work on um, more, uh, uh, and more evaluating approaches. So this is part of our ongoing work. So currently we are running a training of trainers program for newborn care nurse managers to train them as trainers so that they can scale up the training in their own newborn care unit. And uh, we have a pilot training for newborn care uh, nurses in two hospitals where the trainers are, where we are training these trainers. And we look forward to do in-depth evaluation approaches for the TOT program and the pilot trainings for the newborn care unit. And we are as well looking forward to incorporating patients' experiences from the RESPECT study so that the nurses can also hear the patients' voices. What are patients saying about the care that we, we give them? And we feel this will be a very valuable input to the training. And uh, above all, we are looking forward to explore how these skills can be taught in the nursing school. So looking forward to working with the nursing schools to see how this program can be taught in the nursing school, because that's where the nurses need to learn how to relate well with patients and how to manage the many emotional challenges that they uh, that uh, come with the work that they do. Uh, thank you, Sasti.